Product photography and still life photography share similar ways of capturing. My name is Mark Hebbings, a professional photographer for over two decades now. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you Kelly Lawson. Now, Kelly is a genius at capturing product and still life photography. And I am going to sort of jump into one of her sessions. I'm so excited because she has some very unique ways to actually help you capture your own photographs in a very inexpensive but high quality way. Let's go see her. So Kelly, thank you so much for inviting me to this wonderful place that you have. And it is actually set up really well for product and still life photography. Like you have these two windows here which produce amazing natural light. And I can imagine that you just really are inspired in this location. It's true, it's my favorite place on earth here, Mark. And um, it's not a coincidence that there's oodles of natural light in here. I may have, um, that may have influenced my decision to come here. Now, you are a specialist at not only still life and product photography, but you actually teach it as well. And I know that a lot of your goals is to help both beginner photographers and also entrepreneurs to take their products and learn to capture good images for social media, for marketing, for advertising. Now you told me we're gonna be doing this shot with your iPhone and your bigger DSLR. And I think that's really cool because it shows people that they don't need the thousands of dollars, uh, you know, for a big expensive DSLR. They can oftentimes just use their mobile phone. Business owners are really busy people. They've got a lot of things to do. They don't really have time and it's a big learning curve to understand a DSLR camera. While it's my preferred device, this one can be equally as good if you know how to analyze the light and use it properly. So Kelly, I'm really excited to go through your top five. Why you chose them? What do these photos mean to you? So let's begin. Yeah, so often um, it means a lot to me to photograph local artisan product. Yeah. So that's what we have here in this particular photo. And I love adding feminine elements sure. into the background or foreground. And in this case, I chose uh, something that matched the background so that it gave the product the opportunity to really take the spotlight. So there's nothing competing with it. Oh, that's cool. So this particular photo was taken at a dinner for the Maritime Edit magazine. Okay. And what I love about this photo is that it's real life. I think mm. with product photography, sometimes we tend to get things a little too contrived and they're less relatable and less real life. In this case, it's real life. The plate is messy, the table is messy, and you can see that it was a holiday celebration. What I love is it's framed so nicely with the greenery around the top. That's perfect. Yeah, it was a beautiful dinner, it was a high key environment, so it was all things that I love. Oh, that's good. So the first thing I like to do, and this is also uh, what I teach my students, is to look for the direction of the light. So we have this big beautiful window here, we have another one there spilling in all kinds of natural light, and when we look down at the product and see where the shadows are, that tells us where the light is coming from. So in this case we've got shadows coming in this direction, um, so I'm going to take this reflector, which is just a piece of foam core that comes from a local craft shop, costs about 50 cents, it's very replaceable. Um, I keep them everywhere for this reason. Um, but when I bring this up, you'll see it just helps to um, reflect the light back onto the product and reduce those shadows. So. And that's what you're talking about with regards to that high key look, that soft look, is this reflector is actually very central to your look. Yes, that's true. So I have these everywhere. I love white walls for that reason. So the first thing I'm going to do, Mark, is um, many cell phone devices have various lens options. Yep. I'm using an iPhone 12 Pro and I have three lens options. So I'm going to choose the number two, which means a telephoto lens. The reason for that is because it's going to keep the product as close to the real proportions as possible. When I use the wider angle, it distorts things a little bit and it just makes things look a little funny, almost like as if you're looking into one of those Christmas bulbs. I've chosen the telephoto lens and now I'm just going to take the photo um, as close to level as possible. What's really key is that I hold my phone as 
steadily as possible. And so to do that, uh, usually what I do is recommend that you hold your elbows in close to your body mm -hmm. and take a breath and breathe it all out. And once you've let out all your breath, you can take the shot. So I'm gonna do that now. Can you take it with your larger DSLR, your Ab camera? Absolutely. I'd love to see the difference. Yeah, so this is my preferred device, although yeah. uh, understandably can be intimidating and a bit expensive for folks who um, aren't spending a lot of time with photography. Very similar process with the DSLR. Ideally, I would use a boom tripod because that way I know that it's going to be nice and steady, but for the sake of today's uh, session, I'm just going to freehand it. That looks really great. Like I, I can't even see how good it looks on the back of your screen. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, and also, same thing. It's okay that there's extra information on either side of the photo because I'm going to crop it later. So I'm not too worried about getting a close crop right now. That's something that I can do later. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, who doesn't like fresh cold beer? And this photo I took straight on to illustrate the power in just a simple straight on photo. And for even added emphasis, sometimes I angle my camera a little bit below the product just to give it that extra sense of empowerment. So would that be like considered a hero shot as they say? Yes, exactly. Oh, cool. Now, I really love this photo. It's so simple, and sometimes I think it's nice to give yourself permission to take a minimalistic photo. In this case, we've got lots of negative space, and these are New Brunswick potatoes. I had no idea what that was when I first saw it. It's like, are these berries? Are they rocks? But these are potatoes, and that minimalist aspect really grabs me, and I think it's a winner. Now, you also love taking still life and product photography with natural backgrounds, whether it be, uh, you know, an outside background or this wonderful, like, living room scene you have here. So do you have a vase or something that we could do with, without this uh, reflector? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have some beautiful pottery here. We could use um, some of that. Okay, well, let's get to it. How do I get that beautiful background blur in my product photos if I'm only using like an Android or a, an iPhone? I have the best advice for that. And it's to use portrait mode on your smartphone. Okay. All iPhones and most Android phones will have a portrait option. And it's not just for taking photos of people. It is a great way to get a stunning product photo. Cool. Well, let's try it. So we have this beautiful vase here. It's perfect. We're going to apply the portrait mode and then just touch the area that you'd like to be in focus. Hold your device nice and steady and take the photo. Well, actually, I can see the beautiful blur right now. That is amazing. And that can be done for pretty much any product. Absolutely. It really gives the viewer clarity on what the subject of the photo is. This is another one that I love, another local artisan, a handmade product, and I often incorporate hands in my product photography. I like to add that human element and give the viewer the ability to envision themselves interacting with the product. And it also gives a sense of scale for how big the product is. Yeah, and involving hands is definitely a human element, and it's really, really good to funnel the viewer's attention into the product. Yeah, and of course, as we chatted about earlier, if you use portrait mode, you can get that blurred out background and the tack sharp focus on the product itself. Well, Kelly, thank you. That was a blast. I know you have a bit more photography work to do for clients, so I'm going to let you get to it and we'll talk soon. Yeah, thanks for joining, Mark. Okay, bye-bye. That was so fun. It was really great to see Kelly's process for not only the heart and soul, but also the technical aspects of product and still life photography. I hope you enjoyed this session. I certainly did. We'll talk soon.